everyone, welcome to the Center for Social Innovation and welcome to the Community Bonds Guide launch this evening. It's wonderful to see so many new faces in the room. Um, uh, so this is the house that Community Bonds built. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a, um, a really long day today. How many people are here because they heard me on Metro Morning? Yeah, okay, so really excited to have folks who um, are, are new to this topic. How many people have heard about community bonds uh, already? All right, wow, look, our marketing is working. How many people are working on a project right now that they think community bonds might be relevant to? Oh, yes, 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 that's amazing. Okay, good. So I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet, but here's the format of what we're going to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about what exactly a community bond is, but I'm going to keep it really short because, of course, I want you to buy the book. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we did it, uh, the amazing people who helped us to do it, um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what you'll find inside the book, and um, and then I'm going to I'm going to open it up to some question and answers, just because it is a fairly complicated topic, and I want to make sure that everybody has sort of a, a broad base. And we're going to get out of here in 15 to 20 minutes. I promise it won't be long and arduous, but then we can have another glass of wine and connect with one another. Um, it really is good to see so many fresh faces. Uh, today we had uh, the Center for Social Innovations uh, Summit where we convened about 140 of our members today uh, to look at how we can co-create uh, and accelerate member benefit by working together. Uh, you'll see some of the outputs along the door. Um, the work that the Center for Social Innovation does, we're a not-for-profit social enterprise that provides shared space and services to 350 organizations that are working to change the world. The reason I mention the summit is because it's the kind of thing that we do at CSI, the kind of uh, leveraging the power of incredible entrepreneurs and people who are trying to change the world, finding ways to help uh, them to become more collaborative, more creative, more innovative in the work that they do, and that we are all sharing in this value of really bringing our talents, our skills, our competencies to making the world a better place. And I know that you share that value too or you would not be here tonight. It's that drive, it's that mission, which is the foundation on which the concept of community bonds has been built. It's our deep, fundamental belief that it's what we do in, in our spaces that really is where social change happens. And so the drive to create the community bonds really came out of the drive to fulfill our mission, which was to catalyze social innovation in Toronto and around the world. So, what exactly is a community bond and how did we do it? Super quick, it's over at 215 Spadina in Margie Zeidler's absolutely beautiful Robertson building. We were successful, but we really didn't own a single thing. In fact, you can ask Beth Coates, who helped us finance the expansion to the fourth floor. She was desperate to find any kind of collateral she could for the first time she gave us financing. She ended up putting the lien on our telephone system. That's how pathetic we were in terms of assets. And let me tell you something, Beth, it's not worth anything, really. But don't hold that against me. Um, you'd have to find a buyer first. <laughs> um, we had a growing waiting list. We had an incredible growing community of people who were interested in what we did. And we were really curious about the concept of community wealth. This idea that we might not just lease but that we might leverage what we do to be able to start building assets for the community, by the community, in perpetuity. We are a not-for-profit organization, and we're committed to the values of ensuring that those assets are locked. So when we are promoting the work in community bonds, we're really talking about being able to create spaces and protect public, quasi-public spaces so that they're here in service for generations to come. So here's the deal. We've been looking for real estate, a little bit here, a little bit there, nothing really looked good. And then what happened is on December 13th, 2009, uh, Alex Spiegel and Dean Goodman introduced me and brought me into this building. And just sort of like the house that I bought, I kind of fell madly in love and I said, this will be mine. Uh, and of course, um, it was ridiculous. Uh, this was a building that was four and a half million dollars and needed well over two million dollars of upgrades to get the space up and running. And the seller wanted to move quickly. She wanted to uh, move very, very quickly. 
So the question was, how does a small not-for-profit organization with a good business model, but not a single asset to their name, get themselves into a position to actually be able to buy what turned out to be a six and a half million dollar investment? So we made and leveraged every single connection that we could possibly find. The first person I called, again, was Beth Coates uh, with the Canadian Alternative Investment Cooperative because I knew that Beth would give me the really, really hard news and let me know if it was impossible, she would tell me quickly. Uh, she delivers bad news very, very quickly. The second, the second person that we really went to talk to, uh, our board of directors, obviously, but then we went to the city of Toronto. And the city of Toronto, um, uh, under David Miller has an, had an incredible, probably still does have an incredible economic development department. I had a meeting with the fellow, the director of economic development called Mike Williams between Christmas and New Year's and I said, Mike, I really want to do this. That's sort of the process of being able to bring the city on side to provide that loan guarantee which became an incredibly important first step to be able to take that loan guarantee to the banking institutions to be able to find what turned out to be a four and a half million dollar mortgage. We searched around, we looked for different folks, and then what we realized is that really it was our very own credit union, Alterna Credit, who came uh, and stepped up and uh, gave us the best rate that we could find. Here's the deal. We're still short two million dollars. So they're going to give us 4.5, they've already figured out how we can do the development in terms of that home mortgage, but we still had to come up with some way of raising $2 million and really $50,000 max in our reserve fund, like not a penny more. So the question became, how do we do this? And a wonderful man by the name of Mike LeBay, who runs an amazing social enterprise called Options for Homes, he said to me in a kind of challenging Mike LeBay kind of way, he said, Tanya, if you can turn your social capital into financial capital, now that will be impressive. And it, it wasn't the start of this idea, but it certainly challenged us to figure out how we could construct a finance tool that would enable us to be able to engage the people that matter most to us, our members, our partners, the foundations and communities that we had been a part of throughout our uh, five, six years of work, and how do we get them to turn their being a champion for what we believe in into an actual financial investment? And how do we make sure that this investment is accessible? And this was a really big deal breaker for me. Because what happens is that it seems to me in my crass, really uneducated way that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And all of these financial tools are really designed to facilitate rich people getting richer and being able to invest in 12 and 15 percent returns. And how do we create investment opportunities for folks like us who really, if, we're like, if we max out our RRSPs, we're blessed. But really, how many times have you actually had a chance to fulfill every single potential dollar in that RRSP fund? So the question becomes, how do we create an accessible, investment opportunity for the people to be able to invest in something local that they could actually walk into. And working with the co-author of our guide, Scott Hughes, and the incomparable lawyer, Brian Eiler, uh, who I think is the lawyer for every progressive, amazing organization in this city, we drummed up this idea of the community bond. And quite simply, it's a loan. As a social enterprise, we can't issue equity, but we can issue loan. We can offer uh, a debt instrument. The community bond is a debt instrument that is offering a fair market return, in our case, 4%, over a period of time with a minimum investment of $10,000. We were able to, because it was an interest in a mortgage, because it was a building and a property, we were able to make this investment RRSP eligible. So what the community bond is, quite simply, is an RSP eligible investment offering a 4% return over a five-year term at a minimum $10,000 investment. Nice, good investment, eh? <laughs> Who wants to buy? Uh, you see, I'm already sold out. <laughs> um, so that's how we did it, and the incredible number of people uh, who the, the number of people who helped was just phenomenal, and I, I simply can't go through them all. We were able to, with this concept, uh, raise 1.4 million dollars in under four months, and we were able to achieve our target of two million dollars within an eight-month period. Yeah.
clap for me, but I gotta tell you, I was just doing the pitching. It was the investors, uh, the incredible number of people who came out of the woodwork. And I just wanna talk a little bit about the kind of investors that were there. We had three foundations invest from their capital funds. This is super important to me. This is the folks who are sitting on a big wad of cash, and they really only play with, say, four or five, three to five percent of that. The bulk of it stays earning money. So the opportunity to create an impact investment from that capital fund was an incredible opportunity. And I think it really started to break down barriers within the foundation community. And then we had every one of my incomparable board of directors invested in the CSI community bond. And I think that this was an incredible vote of support and I strongly suggest as you're looking at doing this for yourselves, really look at how your board invests. We also realized when we were kind of pondering, well is this a for-profit investment or a non-profit investment, we realized there really are two different types of investors. There's people who are equity investors who are looking to get in, get out, and cash out big. And then there's the people. The folks who actually really care about what you're doing and who are really deeply interested in making sure that what happens is important, it's valuable, it adds value to that community. They're what you might call patient capital investors. And my goal was to reach as many of them as we possibly could. So putting the bond offering together was a, a, a clever little nut. Being able to engage the incredible range of investors um, was a really uh, big challenge. But ultimately, at its core, and what the potential of community bonds is for me, it's about buying local. It's about slow money. It's about citizens reclaiming our public spaces. It's about us being and finding strategies to build community wealth. The bond concept is about communities re-engaging in the things that matter and then utilizing the assets that they have to be able to turn their visions into reality. It's about the ultimate citizen engagement and it's really about the ultimate democratization of our society. So I'm super, super excited about the guide because, you know, it's one thing to um, it's one thing to have kind of figured out how to do something that's super cool, but What's really, really exciting is looking at where this idea could go. When I, um, when once we'd done and kind of recovered from buying this really, really challenging building, uh, the real question uh, that came to me was how do we, how do we scale this idea? How do we take this concept and use it as the social innovation tool that it really is? How do we get it into the hands of as many not-for-profits and charities and community-based groups as we possibly can? And how do we hold back on getting seduced by the concepts of social finance and stay focused on what really matters, which is community benefit? It's the folks like you in the room, the social entrepreneurs, the folks who are really trying to change the world. This is where the ideas that community bonds were built for. So you can get sucked into all of this lovely, beautiful stuff around impact investing, and I'm all for it, but really, it's the magic of community. It's the magic of these ideas that are on the ground that are going to actually change our world. And it's these ideas that matter. And this is why we wrote the Community Bonds uh, Guidebook. I do have to say, it might have been the hardest thing I've ever done, but it was way harder for Grace, who actually did all the work in getting this bond guide out the door. Uh, yes, exactly. It's funny, it took us what, like nine months, maybe, yeah, nine months to buy a building, not even, like maybe six months to buy a building. It took us over a year to publish this little baby. It was way harder than buying a building. <laughs> Um, and it wouldn't have happened without the incredible work of some amazing people. I just want to acknowledge the remarkable uh, early visionary support of the Toronto Atmospheric Fund. Ben and Tim are both here tonight, but I just can't tell you. To have a, um, an organization like TAF to partner with on so many projects means so much to us. <clears throat> but there's something that TAF does that is remarkable, which is that they see good ideas early and they back them. And not every funder can do that or will do that. TAF, uh, TAF came to us and they said, this, this matters. We need you to write it down. 
And then we promised them a 16-page description. <laughs> and then we took a year and a half to complete the project. But that's another issue. I do want to remark, uh, recognize that incredible leadership that, uh, that the organization has taken. And thank you so much. It would not have happened without the Toronto Atmospheric Fund. I want to recognize my colleagues through that are connected through the Ontario Social Economy Roundtable. There have been a number of folks that are connected through <coughs> OSER and the Ontario Nonprofit Network who have been absolutely instrumental in providing guidance, support, advice on how we take this concept and roll it out across Ontario and across Canada. The kind of leadership that the col my colleagues have in this field of social enterprise and social economy is phenomenal. Early adopters. 25 years, 27 years for the Canadian Alternative Investment Cooperative, the experience and the knowledge that we already have about this field in our community that is resident right here is phenomenal. And the community bond concept did not come out of anywhere. It has been played with for years and years and years. Many of these great ideas are coming out of the church community. They're coming out of uh, religious affiliations because that's where communities have been organizing for generations. So to honor the, where these ideas have come from, we're watching community organizations emerge. There's a fellow here, Joe from Monforte, uh, Ruth Clausen, yeah, Ruth Clausen, really amazing uh, entrepreneur who really, I, we don't call it community bonds because community bonds were saving for the nonprofit side and uh, Monforte is on the for-profit side, but they've done something brilliant. I call it cheese futures. Cheese Futures is exactly the kind of thing where we're re-engaging citizens in raising capital to ensure that good things happen. Solar Share, amazing work happening looking at how we begin to invest in the creation of renewable energy sources. Daniel's not here from the Zoo Share project, but I mentioned them on the radio again today. Amazing innovations and watching how these ideas are growing and inspiring other folks to be able to glom onto the pieces that they can grasp that are relevant and take those and bring those to scale. That's why we wrote the Bond Guide. We wrote the Bond Guide because we believe in social innovation, we believe in social change, and we really believe most, most deeply that if we can put the power back in the hands of people, that we really will make the world a better place. So, what's in the Bond Guide? Uh, really, really quickly, Oop, it's beautiful. And you should buy it because it's pretty. <laughs> um, what we've done is we've told the story of the Center for Social Innovation. We've provided a foundation uh, for uh, the concepts of uh, community bonds. But we've also spent quite a bit of time talking about what kind of an organization you need to have to be able to be ready to take on something like a community bond. So it's not for everybody. There's no question that real estate-backed projects are going to have a much easier time developing this concept because they simply have an asset that they can uh, uh, have security against. It doesn't mean that they should be limited to that, but it, these are the kinds of issues that we grapple with. We talk about what makes a good investor's package. We talk about the regulation, the legal frameworks, what kinds of trust agreements you need to have, what kind of a bond agreement you might have. So this is a foundation. I think you'll find it incredibly educational. I want to just recognize the folks who have made contributions to this. Uh, Erin Elliott, who may or may not be here. She's here. Erin uh, has been a, uh, a key editor and thought collaborator with me through the early days of this crazy project. Um, Hemutal Dotan, who's now with Torontoist, was also involved in the early days. Eli Malitsky, who I think failed because we had a really long day today, is my forever collaborator, but was uh, absolutely essential to the development of this. Beth Coates was a, such a valuable contributor, as was Brian Eiler, our advisor, and Scott Hughes and I really did uh, took the first stab at the bulk of that writing. So, um, and I cannot tell you uh, enough about um, beautiful design work that was done by Pat and Tina. And once again, I just want to thank uh, Grace, my executive assistant turned project coordinator, who has shepherded this project through from the very early days to bring us this real, true, live, actual publication. You've done great work, Grace. So uh, thank you to all of you and um, all those wonderful people who contributed. And I think what I'll just do right now, and then we'll open it up to questions really quickly, is just tell you the future of community bonds and where we hope to go with them. So this is the first, this is a deliverable, it means that I can close the TAF file. 
And now I have to open up the uh, Ontario Trillium Foundation file and the Sednet file, which are a couple of other funders who have come together to figure out how do we take these materials and um, make them available on the internet. So within the coming few weeks, we'll see the launch of communitybonds.ca. And on communitybonds.ca, you'll be able to get the materials, but we're also going to do something that we've never done before. We're going to make available all of the templates and materials that we used in the co-creation of the bond. So we'll be opening up a portion of the website that will allow you to download everything from our investors package to our bond agreement, uh, to our trust agreements. We want to make that as simple and easy as we possibly can and make it as affordable as we can. We'll also be launching a workshop series where we'll be providing more in-depth workshops to provide folks who are in the midst of this process uh, with training and support. And finally, we'll be launching a community of practice for those of you who are also attempting to move these issues and these projects forward. On the website, we'll also be looking at doing some sort of matchmaking so that we can find out uh, and find a tool in a way where we can match folks who are interested in making community investments and impact investments and match them up with the projects that matter that are working with the social enterprise lens to be able to make magic in our city. So there you go. Thank you very, very much. And uh, I guess I'll just open it up to questions.